Say the word cheesesteak to people and you tend to get certain reactions. Eyes light up, heads nod, and smiles form, big smiles. The rhythmic chop-chop of the spatula, that thick aroma of onions grilling, the buzz of friends and strangers, even rivals. Conversation flowing, the mouths watering. The anticipation of rich flavors is clear, but cheesesteaks are more than simply something tasty that you eat. A cheesesteak is an experience, a happening. Part ritual, part social stimulant, part sensory celebration. Yeah, it's delicious, but it's also fun, moving. It transcends backgrounds and generations. By popular definition, a sandwich is food, typically with layered meats, cheeses, veggies, and spreads, housed inside bread for easy handling and eating. So sure, taken literally, a cheesesteak is a sandwich. But calling a cheesesteak a sandwich is like saying the Venus de Milo is just a statue, or the you-know-what is just a game. Sure, a cheesesteak checks many of those boxes, but this is simply not in the same league as a PB&J or a BLT, or even a burger. A cheesesteak is the ultimate work hard, play hard, late night, tailgate, guilty pleasure, best buds indulgence. The classic cheesesteak, thinly sliced ribeye, gooey cheese, soft and sweet browned onions, all cradled in a fresh long roll. And it's evolved and been reimagined over the years. Fancier cuts of beef, chicken, seeded rolls, sharp cheeses, cheesesteak hoagies, mushrooms and peppers, marinara and mozzarella, sriracha ketchup on pizza and in omelets, and on and on. In fact, in some places, the spin is downright decadent. Wagyu beef, foie gras, truffle cheese whiz, paired with champagne? But how did we get here? Where and when did this majestic culinary creation come from? Some say cookbooks offered beefsteak sandwiches as far back as the 1800s. But the cheesesteak as we know and love it traces back to the 1930s when South Philly hot dog stand owner Pat Oliveri made his living serving local workers and residents near the city's famed open-air Italian market. As legend has it, tired of his own franks and fish cakes, Pat one day gets a hankering for something different to eat. He asks his younger brother Harry to go get scraps of meat from the butcher down the street. Hungrier for lunch than he is for innovation or fame and fortune, Pat frizzles the beef and puts it on a hot dog roll. Simple. But the unfamiliar aromas of fried steak and onions teases the city blocks and lines of patrons. One customer, a local cab driver, requests a taste, so he and Pat end up sharing the world's first Philly steak. Word spreads fast, and the Oliveri brothers soon ditch their dogs and go all in on steak sandwiches. Nearly 90 years later, Pat's King of Steaks is one of the most iconic food establishments of any kind anywhere in the world. Despite its growing popularity, the Philly steak didn't become a Philly cheesesteak until roughly a decade later when cocky Joe Lorenzo, a manager at a second Pat's location, decided to add some sliced provolone. This marked the first known appearance of cheese on the Philly steak sandwich. Fast forward another decade or so and we get the introduction of liquid cheese whiz. Kraft's processed sauce, which has become the de facto standard for many cheesesteak connoisseurs over the years, became a hit among the increasing number of steak shops because of how fast and easy it was to slather onto an open steak. In the 60s, a feisty new challenger took the city of brotherly love by storm. Preceding Rocky Balboa by a decade, second-generation restaurateur Joey Vento opened Gino's Steaks at the same notorious South Philly intersection as Pat's. Attracting attention with Vegas-like lights and shameless claims of superiority, this spawned the enduring and endearing Pat's vs. Gino's rivalry, igniting a passionate debate among cheesesteak aficionados and casual tasters alike about which serves the better cheesesteak. Of course, the debate rages beyond just Pat's and Gino's, though they tend to get a lot of the limelight. A third iconic steak joint raised its game in 1976. Jim Steaks opened its famous South Street doors during America's bicentennial, continuing to earn raves among critics and customers, and challenging the pair on Passyunk for the cheesesteak crown. As more restaurants began capitalizing on the craze, cheesesteak lovers were soon able to cook up their favorite feast at home, too. Steakum frozen steaks hit the consumer market in the mid-70s as a new wave of innovation was just starting to heat up. Through the 80s and 90s and into the new millennium, the cheesesteak's upward trend inspired greater popularity, reach, and creativity. From chicken cheesesteaks to egg rolls and sliders to Philly cheesesteak pizza. From special ethnic and dietary products to global Philly steak suppliers and eateries. Even world records and cheesesteak festivals. 
After nearly 90 years, there are more ways than ever to cure your carnivorous craving. The Philly cheesesteak has earned its legendary status, from humble beginnings to worldwide sensation. Born and raised in a spirited and gritty town with a pretty rich history of its own, the Philly cheesesteak has surpassed its lunch and dinner brethren to become a cultural obsession. It's an attitude, in your face, literally and figuratively, and it's personal, fueling endless dialogue and debate. Sliced or chopped, whiz versus American, Swiss cheese, really? And yeah, I'm gonna finish it. It's an edible thrill ride, from heart-pounding anticipation to the rush of that first taste through each exhilarating chomp, drip, and wipe, and eventually the satisfied acceptance of the last bite.